Okay, we're good to go. All right, so morning everyone. So what we're going to do today is just run through Microsoft Teams again. So some of you may have already been got started on Teams. Maybe some of you have just been having a look before everybody else gets migrated across. Um, and it's, it's a bit difficult to start with Teams until your whole team is on it. So it's a good idea to have a look at this and have a think about the sorts of things you can do. And then maybe go and have a, a chat with your actual teams um, about what you think you could use some of this content for. So as I say, feel free to chip in at, at any point. So what we'll, we'll cover this morning is how to join or create uh, a team. Um, obviously, you can't create teams yourself. You have to request them. So I'll go through the request form um, to actually create one of your teams. And then I'll show you how to manage the team, which includes adding channels, members, uh, if you need to leave a team, editing teams, doing the settings, all that kind of stuff. We'll have a look at some of the some of the settings you can do with teams. Um, I'll talk about adding members uh, and guests and the difference between owners as well. Uh, we'll talk about all of that content. Um, and then I'll have a look at the channels, like I said, and creating the new private channels that have just, just come in this week. Um, so we'll have a little chat about those as well. And then have a look at the different sorts of apps that you can install. OK, that's going to be different for everybody, um, so don't worry too much about the apps. We will do separate training sessions where we can, you know, do some classroom based things on some of these as well moving forward. Um, and then I'll touch on actually running Teams meetings like the one we're doing now, so you can sort of maybe do the same sort of things I'm doing for either training sessions or just replacing your WebEx meetings and, and all the rest of them. So like I say, chip in at any point. OK, so let's move on to requesting a team to start with. So <clears throat> you may have seen the icon for this. So if you haven't got a team yet, and um, obviously you're, you're all part of the champions team, so you can kind of see how we're using that particular space. But your own departmental teams will be very different to the champions one. So to request a team, the easiest thing to do is just use the IT self-service uh, icon that's on your desktop. And then just on the green square there, you've got request a new Microsoft team. OK, you give that a click or if you're in the champions team, if you look on the, the general channel on the actual champion SharePoint page we've got, I've put a big giant request a team button on there as well. So either either one of those will launch the new Microsoft team or SharePoint site request form that Dren's put together. So obviously when you're filling this in, make sure the request is going in as a Microsoft team. Um, now there is going to be some some work done on naming conventions moving forward with Microsoft Teams and everything uh, just to kind of keep things fairly uniform looking across the trust when everybody starts asking for these things. Um, so have a good think about what you actually want to call your team and then put a decent description in there as well. So that's just going to help us try and avoid duplicate teams being created moving forward in the trust so we don't have two different physio teams or two different uh, learning development teams because you and your colleague haven't spoken to each other and you've just gone and created things. Um, so we can check that out. So put some decent description in there and then fill in the rest of the, the form with your department and so on. OK, once you fill that in, uh, Dren will get the request and when he can, he'll create the team for you and, and get in touch with some details. OK, so let's get into actually teams and having a bit of a play. So let me just share my screen. And let's just share screen one. I'm just going to minimize that and jump teams up. So, right, okay, can you see your own faces, some of you? I'm going to take that as a yes. Uh, yeah. All right, yeah, cool, thank you. Um, so, I'm going to click on teams on the left hand side here, and you can see some of the, the actual teams that I've got gone. I'll just tidy it up a second so it looks a little bit neater. Um, so if you're brand new to Teams and you haven't seen it, it's a bit daunting. There's a lot going on. There's lots of notifications and pop ups and stuff going on all over the place. So it can be a bit crazy. Hopefully you won't have as quite as many as me just yet, but this is eventually maybe the sort of thing it's going to look like for yourselves. Um, so once you've created a team, so once Dren has created the team for you and it's appeared in your list here, um, it'll look a little bit like my test team one that I've got set up just here. So with every single team, you will automatically get a general channel. OK, so you'll always get that general channel and it will consist of a conversations tab, a files tab, and you'll get a wiki to start with. OK, you use this plus icon to add extra tabs such as SharePoint pages, planners, forms, Excel sheets, one uh, one notes, uh, all sorts of different content. So you can build the content. OK, so you'll automatically get that general channel. What you'll then do or can do is start to build channels for your own uh, projects or different staff groups uh, or different sites. It completely 
depends on on what you're going to use this stuff for so if i show you my education training and development team uh, i've got the general channel but then we have split ours up into the fgh team the rli team uh, we've got a channel for all of our upgrades that we we discuss all the upgrades for our training environments in and then i've got other hidden channels that i don't pay as much attention to i can still go and check on them um, but that's for a new new system that we're developing that I, I jump into when I want to rather than being notified about it all the time. So you can hide channels as well as now, as you can see this test private channel I've got here with a little padlock against it. You can now create private channels within your teams, which we couldn't do. So if you've been on the champion strain already, we would have told you if you needed to hide information from certain people, you would have to have a separate team. Well, you don't anymore. So they've literally just switched that on this week, which is really good. So you can have like a private channel where you can manage who actually views the content of that particular channel. So it's a really good new addition. So like I say, Microsoft Office 365 is their evergreen platform and it's continuously updating all the time. So a really good thing to, <clears throat> to do for all of you to, to keep on top of all these changes that are coming in is just in the search bar at the top, if you do forward slash, uh, what's new, it will tell you all the new um, installments that have come in through Microsoft Teams. So you can filter through those. So it's just forward slash what's new in the command bar. Uh, you'll also find a load of useful training videos in there as well. OK, so if you, have, if you haven't had a look at those, <clears throat> excuse me, it's a really good place to start and show your colleagues. Um, and again, these are all available through Microsoft's website as well. I'll show you where to get the links to all that information as well. Um, but when I first got started with all this stuff, um, <clears throat> this was the first place I went to and it just gave me a decent kind of look at, at the very beginnings of Teams and what, what is possible to, to actually do with them. OK, so <clears throat> let me jump back into the, the test team here. So what I'm going to do to start with is just show you some of the, the basic settings for managing your team first and getting it set up with the right people and how it looks and what people can do in it and things like that. So if I hover over test team, I'm going to go over to the right hand side and click these little three dots on the right hand side here. So what you can also do is hide teams and um, you can see at the bottom here, I've got some hidden teams. OK, uh, these are teams that people have added me to just to help them get started, create some content and work with them. And um, so what I do is I hide them so I don't again get pestered by all the notifications. But if they need my help, I do just dip back in and kind of give them a hand with things. Uh, but it just hides them out of the way. So you can hide teams as well. So the other options there is manage teams. So this is where we're going to do the, the majority of your settings for your actual team. So let's click on manage team. OK, and from here you can see the owners of the team, myself and Dren, and then any members and guests to the team as well. So as an owner, you can create the, you can request after you've requested the team you'll become the owner but you can then control what content and what um, sort of settings you, your members and your guests can actually do as part of that team so when I click on add member here okay so I'm going to add a new member of my team into this test team so I'm going to pop Lynn in there uh, there she is okay and then I click on add all right Lynn has now been added into that team and I can also change her permissions there. So I could make her an owner of the team if she needed to be. OK, and then just I'll just keep it as a member for now. If we can close. All right. If I suddenly realize, oh, actually, that's the wrong person I didn't want to. I can just press the X and remove Lynn from the team just as easy. OK, or if I needed to upgrade Phil or Darren to be an owner again, just drop it down, set it to owner. So the other thing we can do, which is which is a, a benefit but also you've got to be quite careful with is you can invite external people into your team. So when uh, when we in the training department are working on uh, a new training environment or we've got a new product coming into Lorenzo or something like that, we'll often have to work with like CSC to, to work with them with their training environments and things like that. So it could be that I want to add somebody from CSC into our team to collaborate with conversations and files and things like that. So I could do that by pressing add member and what I would do is type their external email address in. This is my personal email address, so don't worry about any random person there. Uh, but you can see because this is a Hotmail account and um, it automatically puts them as a guest. OK, and the guests will have fewer permissions than your members. And again, you can edit these in the settings, which I'll show you in a second. So this is going to be really useful for people like Trust HQ uh, and CCG members that aren't necessarily UHMB members, but they access minutes and agendas and things like that 
they're going to be able to do that if you put the content within Teams and Teams SharePoint and things like that. But again, if you're going to be doing this, just be very wary that the email addresses that you're putting in are the correct ones. There is another way to add people in, which is by sending them a team code, which I'll show you in a second, which might be a safer way for you to do it, because you could send the code out to the email addresses and the distribution list you've maybe already got set up, and then they request to join the team. So I'll show you that way as well. OK, so that's your members and your guests and um, pending requests. So if someone is requested to join your team, that would show up in here and you could just accept or decline from there. We'll go to the channel section. OK, so I've got some channels set up here already. Now, for those of you that have already created teams um, and set up some channels, but actually some of you wanted the private ones, you can't edit the current ones you've got to become private. You can only do that on new channels. Um, so when I click on add channel at the top here, so this is where you're going to create your channels. And yeah, so I'm going to call this, I don't know, Steph. Uh, yeah. right, example, again, put a useful description within here okay and then when you look at the new this is the new section that's just appeared this uh, privacy section you can drop it down and mark it as a private channel if you want to tie it down to just a couple of members of your team so i can put this as private and what i do when i press next it's going to ask me who of my members can actually access that channel so it might be that i just want darren click add okay it'll think about it for a second Again, I can make him an owner of that particular channel. He won't be an owner of the team, but he would be an owner of that channel if I made him made him so. OK, I can click on done. And again, I've got another private channel there, but there's just me and Darren out the whole team that can actually access the content that goes into this particular channel. OK, so that's as I say, that's a new thing. It literally got switched on yesterday. And um, so if you were wanting private channels and you've already done some work on teams, um, you would have to delete the channels you've got to create new private ones. Um, you do have a maximum capacity of 200 channels you can make, but that includes the deleted ones. So if you have made a big start already, um, they, those ones you delete to replace will go off your 200 list um, at the end. OK, so let's just jump back into the settings again. So that was in channels. Now, the other thing you can do with channels is make it so um, not all the channels show up for everybody. So I've got all these ticked. So if I wasn't interested in this training channel showing up on my list, I could untick that. OK, and you can see that's just changed to hidden channel. If I do that again, just watch this section here. When I remove training, it disappears and tells me that there's one hidden channel because there may be certain channels that you start to use that you're not interested uh, in seeing the notifications for those. So you can customize the way that your team and the channels actually show up for yourself and for the rest of your staff members. Maybe you've got a clinician's channel and a nurse's channel and a support worker's channel. Well, you could hide the ones that aren't relevant for, for yourself. OK, so let's jump into the, the main settings. So when <clears throat> when you create a channel, um, you will automatically get a little coloured square with the initials of the team. OK, now, depending on what you call the team, they don't always quite make sense. So this I3 Clinical Design Authority, I think that showed ID in, a, in the little logo. So you can customise your own little images uh, that are suitable for your, for your channel, uh, for your team, sorry, and actually just press the little edit button and update it from there, or click on team picture and change it from there. You will have to save the images as fairly small uh, file sizes. It doesn't take big giant things, so make sure they're fairly small if you're going to update them from there. OK, so let's have a look at the member permissions. So when everybody's joined uh, the team, they will automatically get all of these rights. OK, so you as an owner of the, the team, if, if that's the case, can go in and actually tweak the settings. And again, this depends on what type of channel you're creating, whether it's a comms channel or whether it's just for a, a small team or a large you know, uh, clinical service you can actually tie down what members can actually do within your team. So allowing members to create and update channels, I can remove that if I don't want them to. Members to create private channels, that's a new one that's just appeared. So again, I can remove that if you don't want people to start making their own private little sections off to the team, um, you can remove that, so that might be a good idea. Uh, allow members to delete and restore channels. So again, if you've, you've put a lot of work into creating channels with lots of content in them, that might be a good idea to just remove that one so people can't delete them by mistake. Uh, add and remove apps. That's one I have actually removed from my own personal team uh, just because you can add lots of apps in. But 
there's lots of third party apps that we're not fully aware of exactly where the data is held or what it does. Um, a lot of them can send you lots of like chatbot messages that gets a little bit irritating. So we found that when we first went live is there's an app called Soapbox and we thought, oh, we'll put it on and see what it looks like. Um, and it was just quite annoying. It just sent us lots of pingy messages every two seconds. Um, and so I just deleted the app and then removed the ability to actually put things in. Um, so again, allow members to upload custom apps. Let's get rid of that one. Um, again, you can just go through and pick the appropriate ones for your, your teams and your channels. Um, so again, connectors, uh, option of deleting their own messages, editing messages, things like that. So you can remove those if you need to. Uh, then we look at guest permissions. So the guests uh, will have fewer permissions. As you can see, there's much less for them to do. They don't actually have anything ticked to start with. Um, you can allow them to create and update channels by ticking that. That's about the extent of the permissions for the guests. Um, so again, it depends on who externally you're adding in, if you want to give them access to be able to do that. So the other thing we can do is, is uh, and again, some of you may have seen this in the Office 365 Champions team if you've been using it, but you can app mention people, you can app mention channels, but you can also app mention the entire team. So like I've done this morning, if I just jump onto uh, the events channel here, so in this announcement that I've done this morning, I've just done an at Office 365 Champions and then all 403 people uh, that have, have got access to the Champions team have got a little activity notification to say Adam's mentioned Office 365 Champions in the events channel. You can go to that. So you can at mention whole teams. I could at mention a channel. OK, so I could mention the events channel, which would make it go bold. And again, everybody would be notified about that. Uh, and again, when it comes to private channels, then only the people within that private channel are going to be mentioned. Or you can at mention specific people as well. So again, and you can remove the surname and it keeps it keeps the name in. So if you are being fairly informal and you just want to put Darren, then you can remove his surname and it will just still at mention him and they'll get an activity notification about that as well. So particularly like those at notifications. I'm going to jump back into settings. At mentions and again, you can remove the actual uh, notifications about teams and channels and things like that from there. OK, so I mentioned a minute ago about creating your teams and adding members. So this is where you'll find the team code. OK, so if you don't, if you, you're creating a team and there's, you know, 500 people to add to that particular team, it's going to be quite time consuming to go through members and do add member, add member, add member. So what you could do is copy this, OK, and then send a, a notification email out to all of the people that need to join that particular team, saying to them the instructions they need to do is go, uh, log into Microsoft Teams, then down at the bottom they would join or create a team. And then in this little section here, you could paste the code and join a team and that would join them into the team. You'd have one of those pending requests uh, that we looked at a second ago. So if I just go back into manage team, pending requests, they would show up there and you would just approve them. So that might be an easier way of setting up your teams without you having to do, as I say, all 500 or plus members of the team that you actually need to pop in there. So that's on the team code. OK, and then you can copy and paste that. But again, you might just need to put a little bit of an instruction or maybe a screenshot on how to join a team. I think we may have a little uh, guide how to do it somewhere. If not, I'll pop on in the, the files tab of the Champions team for you as well. So the other things you can do, and this is both a good and a bad thing, is you can have a bit of fun in some of the conversations and things like that. You've probably seen some of this in your training sessions when you've, when you've, when you've come to see us already is you can put GIFs in, you can put stickers and memes and things like that. Um, but that can also become <clears throat> a little bit irritating. So the first couple of weeks of us having teams, you know, everyone's messing about just seeing what you can do. Uh, and it became a sea of GIFs and, you know, dancing penguins and all the rest of it. You can remove all that. OK, so if you don't want any of that kind of stuff in your particular team or channel, keeping it very professional, you can remove those GIFs and stickers and memes and all the rest of it. OK, so you can take those off if you need to. I'll keep them in for the time being. This is just a test one. OK, so they're the, the main settings. Have you got any questions before we move on? Let me just check the conversations a bit. <coughs> uh, connectors, don't worry about for now, Claire. Um, I'll talk about those on a later, a later course. So I have to keep jumping back on my screens to just check that conversations bit. 
Okay, so I'm going to go to the my test team here and just chat on the general one. So I'm just going to talk about the the conversations tab within a within the general channel or within any channel. The conversations bit is is pretty much the same. So when I'm starting a conversation here, I'm going to type it on my super detailed text. You'll see it just pops it in as like a you know a little pop up, one more social media feed type thing. The the best thing to do is actually click in the in the field and press the A button with a little pen at the bottom to format it properly. So when I click that, you'll then get the subject line. So you know when you're using the champions team, this is the best way to actually put a new conversation piece in. So maybe you're struggling with uh, macros uh, in Excel. Well, give it a title and then put you know whatever it is that you need uh, need help with. Um, so it's just a little bit easier for everybody to kind of see what this particular thread's about. And the other thing to do is if somebody's put something about macros and asked a question and you want to reply to that conversation or talk about that particular thing, is don't just put a new conversation, actually use the reply button underneath the conversation that's already started because then it's part of one conversation rather than having you know, 10, 15 different replies or pushing it further down. It will sit nicely in a little section with all the relevant replies within it here. So if I just use one of these as an example, you can see here Hannah's asked a question and all the replies from everybody involved are sitting nicely within that conversation. Whereas if you do them as separate ones, they just show up like these as separate kind of replies. So let's try and keep them nice and neat. And it's really easy to look back on conversations and things like that. OK, easy one to, uh, to, to not do. Done it myself plenty of times where I've, I've hit reply separately instead of clicking the, the word reply. Um, but it's just good practice to get into from the beginning. So when we're doing a conversation, like I say, decent subheading and um, a bit of content. You can put in hyperlinks and things like that. OK, you can add in uh, tables and all sorts. So it doesn't have to just be little chat messages. It can be structured content, which can also be copied and pasted out into other documents and presentations and all that kind of thing. So you can format all your text properly there. Now, some of the other things you can do from here, rather than just putting general conversation things, if you drop down this new conversation, it gives you the ability to do an announcement. So this is how I've done my sort of announcements for the events this morning, is you can go and change the, the color of the heading. You could insert images if you want to, uh, and then you can actually put the headline in here. Okay. So again, that just makes it stand out quick. If you've got like an important announcement or you know a, a new event that you're announcing or some training or whatever it is, uh, you can set it as announcement and it will kind of make it stand out from the rest of the, the conversation list there. You can also edit who can actually reply. So it might be that you want to put an announcement in, but you don't want loads of replies about it. So you can make it so only yourself and the other moderators, so the other, the other owners of the team could actually reply to that particular message. Um, so you can tweak that if you need to. <coughs> Excuse me. And the other really useful thing you can do from here, I'll just like that as everyone, is post across multiple channels. Now this means multiple channels, not just for this particular test team that I'm in, but if I give it a click, I could post this message, if I click on select channels, across all of my different teams. So I could drop that, drop that down and I can put it into um, the ETD general team and I could put it into the matrons team uh, and all sorts, all of those. So it'll show you here which channels you're actually posting this announcement in. So when we look at, you know, corporate comms and all sorts of notifications about managed training and flu jabs and all that sort of things, you, we can post these across lots of different places if you've got access to those particular channels. OK, so that's quite a useful way of, of pushing your message out to lots of people at once uh, rather than it just being hidden in your one particular channel or area. OK, so all the all, <coughs> excuse me, all the formatting, all the, the headlines, the announcements, again, you can just flick that back if you just want it to be a normal conversation. Nice and easy to just flick between the two. So have a little bit of a, a practice with those when you first get in. Um, when I'm down at the bottom here as well, I've got the paperclip icon. <clears throat> now, some of you may have started to move across to OneDrive. If you haven't, I'll be doing a session late this afternoon. I think it's one o'clock. Uh, I'll, I'll advertise it later, I'll, I'll double check, uh, but we'll be covering Outlook and the use of OneDrive as well. So I'll show you how to, to move all your documents and things up to the cloud. Um, so if I want to attach a document, when I click it these days, I can either upload from my computer, if you're still using my documents and things like that, or I can also use OneDrive now. So if I click on OneDrive, it'll show me my OneDrive 
files and folders that I've moved across. Uh, I can just choose that document and I can upload a copy. So it's going to upload the file and that file will actually live within the files tab up here as well. And its actual location is, is, is stored on SharePoint. Whether you've built a SharePoint page or not, when you create a team, it creates a team SharePoint site and there'll be a folder in there called test team general and any files that I've saved will actually be stored in that location as well. OK, so as I say, with these announcements, I can press send on that now and you can see it's got a headline, it's got, <coughs> it's got a decent subheading, it's got some tables and it's got inserted documents as well. OK, so any questions about um, conversations and, and chats from there? Just check the little pop up message. No, we're all good. OK, I'll click on. So the other thing you can do down with conversations is obviously you've got the, the smiley faces and you've got GIFs and stickers where you can create your own memes and things like that. I'm not going to harp on about those too much. They're fairly self-explanatory. Um, one really useful function, again, um, you know, if you've got a clinical service and again, you can have the Teams app installed on your phones if you choose to do so. Uh, obviously, there's IG uh, rules around making sure you've got it locked and people that have access to these shared um, like iPods and things if, you, if you're logged in as those. Um, because one really useful function is, is this meet now function. So I could click this meet now, the little camera at the bottom here, and it would start a web call with everybody within that particular team. So, you know, if we've got an emergency meeting, we need to start where we need to speak to everybody in the team immediately. You can click that and it starts a quick live meeting now with everybody within the team, which is really useful. OK, you can also then look at some of these There's separate apps you can put in. There's YouTube videos you can embed. Uh, you can send people praise, little badges of praise for certain things if they performed well or whatever. Uh, you can choose to use those if you want to. OK, so I've, uh, as I, said, I mentioned before, the app mentions. Again, I can app mention particular people. I can app mention particular channels. Uh, so if I mention the projects channel, oops, sorry, there's a space there. OK, or can I mention the entire team? OK, so using the conversations, it is a, a better way of communicating we've found. So within the training team, I very rarely email any of my colleagues anymore. We just chat within this particular section. Uh, and the useful thing to do to look back on particular chats is if I've mentioned the word champion. OK, I can hit champion and it brings back every every word champion in every bit of conversation. Or I can click on people and and I can also look in files and it brings back everything with the word champion that's been shared within teams within the conversations and everything so this search is really powerful and very quick uh, which we're not particularly used to without looking things like that okay so let's have a look at the files and things like that so like I say I've updated a file in here if I go to files there you can see it lives within here okay so from here you can create new documents you can upload them uh, or you can go straight to SharePoint where it'll actually be located if you're building lots of files and folders and things like that as well. OK, so what's happening at the moment as well is I'm recording this meeting. And um, so meeting notes. OK, if I just jump back onto my team screen a second and um, when I'm actually doing this team's meeting, I can actually do show meeting notes. OK, I don't know if you can see this on your screen or not, but I can take notes and actually start to create notes within the, the live meeting that's going on and that saves up at the tab at the top. OK, so when I go back onto Teams, this meeting notes is updated with the meeting, the meeting notes have been, been sort of taken live as we've been doing this session anyway. OK, so some of the other, other things you'll get. So like I said, when you first create a team and you get a general channel, You'll get conversations, you'll get files, and then it starts you with a, a default wiki. OK, so if you've not used a wiki before, it's just almost like a list of instructions or content um, that you create about whatever it is that your channel or your team's about. So I've just created a couple of just brief examples where I can just go across here, put a new section in. OK, try and spell it correctly uh, and actually add content. And again, if you look at the format and tools across the top, you can put images, you can link files, you can put quotes, you can build all this wiki. So when you're first creating your teams, it might, you might want to use the wiki section to maybe lay out your ground rules for how you want people to, to act or use the team, uh, what content it is for them to use, uh, completely up to you. So you can create these wikis yourself. Or if you decide, actually, I'm not going to use this wiki tab, 
OK, I can drop that down and actually just remove the tab altogether so you don't have that. So you can customise all these at the top. OK, so the things you can do to customise and add things into your team to make it more useful is use the, the plus icon to add extra extra content in. Now, whether that's a SharePoint library or one of the new forms, which I'll do a separate teaching session on. Um, so I'll, I'll show you a form just as an example. Uh, I should hopefully have some existing ones. Yeah, so I'll just do the web session feedback one, press save. So I can put a, a form in here that allows everybody within the team to come and fill in one of these sessions, uh, add some content in and submit that. So when I go to uh, this also, you can customise your, your actual feedback that you put in here. So I've got a link to more information at a champion SharePoint page, that sort of thing. Um, now you will find this particular form, this web session feedback form, if you go and look at the videos that I'm recording of these sessions. OK, so you can you can find those next to the video uh, that we're recording today. Also, if you do look back on the videos that I've been recording, and um, if you go to the stream site, which again, I'll show you where to access them from, it is trans everything I'm saying this morning, it's transcribing down the right hand side. So there's no need for me to take minutes or jot down notes. It's literally recording everything I say and typing it out down the right hand side with, with timestamps. Uh, it will be it will pick up on my northern inflections a little bit now and again and, and do slightly wrong words, but I can go in and, and edit all that as well. But as well as that transcription, you can embed forms for feedback and all sorts of things like that on them as well. So it's really quite a useful, useful little app. So some of the other apps you can add in as well as forms. Uh, there's planners, which again, I'll do a separate teaching session on. So we found those really useful for assigning people tasks or daily tasks, weekly tasks or project tasks. And you can have lots of different planners set up across uh, different channels. Uh, you can embed PowerPoints, SharePoint sites, which is really useful. Uh, you know, maybe you're all collaborating on a particular Excel file. You can embed those as well. So there's lots of these you can do. There's lots of these uh, ones below. As you can see, there's plenty of them to choose from. I would do a bit of research before you just go ahead and start clicking on them and, and adding uh, apps in that you're not really sure what they do. So maybe do a bit of research on some of them first or asking the champions team if anybody's used a particular app or if they've got any information on it. OK, so whenever I'm looking at these tabs as well, you'll notice on the right hand side and um, you can expand those so they become a, a bit of a larger screen view when you're using Teams. So it's quite good to, to, to drop those open into to full screen mode. Again, if I just jump to my ETD team and look at the general one. So we've got general conversations, uh, we've got our files, and then we've embedded the SharePoint site we've created uh, so we can access all of our content from in, in here as well. Now, again, it's a lot easier if I put it into expanded tab view uh, so I can view all my different folders that we've got set up all my links to my training environments, if you want to book annual leave, our TMS uh, records, um, and lots of our assessment forms. Those forms I just showed you, we've got a big set of assessment forms set up there, links to our YouTube channel, all sorts of content. OK, and um, the other option you get from here is I can show a tab conversation about that SharePoint page. I can reload it or I can click on this little globe button and actually go straight to the SharePoint site in SharePoint rather than being in Teams. So if I needed to edit my SharePoint page, I would click this button and it would take me there. Now it would do it in Internet Explorer, which is a little bit of a pain because obviously everything works a little bit slicker in Chrome, but it would still take me and open it up into the full SharePoint view if I needed to. OK, so I'll shrink that back down again. Um, so just to show you an example of planners and things like that as well, I'm going to go into my RLI team channel and go to the RLI team planner. And again, we use this for assigning tasks and jobs. So you can see Darren here has got a task to create a particular lesson plan. So instead of me checking up as to where Darren's up to with this particular content, he can come in here and tick off that he's almost finished all of that content. And what I can do is actually just look at charts and see where we're up to with that status progress of of how many tasks are late, how many in progress, and all sorts of things. OK, I can also look at the schedule and actually see when things are actually scheduled in to be completed. OK, but again, I will do some separate teaching on planners and tasks and, and forms and some of those other apps. OK, so as well as all of the conversations and the tabs and things you can add in, Teams can do a lot more as well. So if I go over to uh, the left hand side here, I can use the chat function um, to actually have private conversations with people. 
facilitates these real chats I've had going on with people, uh, which is just one on one conversations. Now, again, from here, I've got a conversations tab. I'll get a files tab to actually access any files that myself and Naomi might have shared together. Now, I might want to see if uh, maybe, maybe find out if one of Naomi's colleagues is in. Maybe Naomi's not in and I need to ask her a question, but I don't know who, who else works in her department. I could click on organisation, OK, and I can find all the rest of the department there as well, so I can speak to somebody else. And the good thing is when you ho hover over people, OK, you've got their contact number. I can start a chat message, email them, organisation list, start a video call or use a, a, a sort of internet call uh, through Teams if that's the case as well. Just a question up there. Private channels just for restrictions on chats. No, so just to answer that, Joe there, uh, private channels completely is, is private for everything. So all the content you create within that private channel is just for you and the person you've added in. So if you create a SharePoint site within that channel, that is also private. Okay, so everything, if I just go to my test team, everything I put into this private channel, only myself and the one other person that I've added into that private channel can see the content. And any apps that I build within this channel are private to just me and that one person or two people or whoever you've added. OK. Um, so the other thing, whilst I'm going on with chats, and this is the team session we've got going on today, this is where I can look back on and, and check on all the chats and things like that. If I just go back to an actual sort of one-to-one -one conversation. Uh, up on the top right hand side here, I can start a video call. I can do an audio uh, internet call. I can also share my screen. So you know how IT kind of goes onto your PCs and, and fix things. You can kind of do that with each other now. And you can actually request to take control of the other person's mouse then, so you can control somebody's screen. So it's great being able to do that, but obviously be careful that people aren't suddenly going to be rooting around your own files and things like that. So if I'm having a chat with Naomi here and I think, oh, do you know what? My colleague Peter needs to be involved in this particular conversation. I can click on add people, type in Peter's name, add him in there. And now me, Naomi and Peter can all have a conversation, the three of us. I can do things like press the little schedule meeting button down at the bottom and actually put a meeting in calendars. Even tells me that they're both free. OK, also maybe we need to do a different date. OK, and again, it'll just check and you can see now as you know, Naomi's busy, she, she couldn't do that day. So it's quite easy to schedule meetings together. And again, if you if you come on to the Outlook session later, I'll show you that version from Outlook, which is even even better version of this. OK, let me just discard those. So you can do private chats. Uh, if I I'll come back to the calendar in a second, uh, I can go down to files and access all of the recent documents that I've been using within the Teams uh, channels. I can look at my own downloads or I can look at my own OneDrive storage. So I've moved everything from my documents over to OneDrive. So I can access all my files and folders from within there as well. I can also just create a new Word document, Excel, PowerPoint, whatever I want, straight from here. So you don't really have to leave Teams a lot, um, with, the, with the exception of Outlook. Um, you can kind of, you create all your new documents, you can access your own files, you can have chat conversations, you can access your SharePoint pages, your planners, you know, shared documents and things that you've been working on. So you can kind of work from this one space a lot of the time. Um, so the other thing is a calendar. So when you look at your calendar, it will pull through your Outlook meetings. You can see this Teams meeting that's already in session. Uh, if it is a Teams meeting, obviously you'll always get the option of this quick join. So you can just click on it from there and actually jump into the Teams meeting. Now, when I'm creating a meeting from within here, I'll just click out here and call this test meeting. OK, and let's say that that's going to start at half past 11 today. When I'm creating meetings from within the calendar in Teams, um, it's slightly different to when you create them from Outlook. OK, because instead of sending an email invitation to everybody, what I do is drop down this little section here and actually put it the, the meeting invitation directly into a channel. So if I go into my test team on here, for example, click test team, and I'm going to put that into the, the projects channel. So maybe this is a particular meeting just for the test team project. So if I schedule that meeting, OK, instead of everybody getting an email notification about it, you can see it's taking me straight to the test team into the projects channel and everybody would click the invitation to the meeting from there to join it. OK. Uh, creation of teams for department ultra migrate. Uh, no, so don't worry about the G drive. That's not moving until next year. Um, 
so that the content will live in SharePoint in Team SharePoint. But again, there'll be a big separate project to work on that sort of stuff. So don't worry about G Drive for now. It's going to live exactly where it is. Don't even think about it. Just concentrate on the the newer content that you're kind of looking at at the moment. OK, so yeah, so Teams meetings again, I could click on that and actually join the meeting. Now, if you've got a WebEx license, you will get the, the add on Teams meeting license, which gives you this conference ID and toll number and things that you can access from here. OK, so if you currently got a WebEx license, you will get the replacement version for Teams. I'll give you that little bit extra as well. OK, and again, I've got the, the Teams app installed on my phone. When I join a Teams meeting, I can actually join it from my mobile and I can view the, the presentations that are being shared. I can see the screens that are being shared. Uh, you can use your cameras on your phone if, if that's the case. Um, so it is quite a useful app to install on your phone, especially because it can replace all these WhatsApp groups I've got going all over the place. And um, because you can use the chat messages, you can use the conversations from the app on your phone, which is more secure than than using sort of third party apps like WhatsApp and things like that. OK, so using Teams meetings is really useful. And like I say, if I just jump back into this this screen, which is us in our live Teams meeting now. And um, so if you just move your mouse, you might not be able to see my actual menu bar. But if you do it for yourself, and um, you have all got the ability to actually take over this meeting and start sharing screens. Don't do it, uh, but you could you could you know run through my presentation uh, at your own pace. You could actually share something off your own screen by using the the share button down at the bottom. And um, if you've got a webcam, you can actually blur all the background. Again, you may have seen this in your training session. If you've got you know sensitive information be on a on a whiteboard behind you whilst you're doing a meeting and you've got your camera on, you can blur it so nobody could see that. Uh, the little three dots for more actions will let you record the meeting show meeting notes, change your device settings. I often use my Bluetooth headphones to, to do these on rather than using the, the PC microphones and things like that or telephones. And um, so there's quite a lot of content. You can also share when I click on the share button, uh, it will show me the presentations that I've been working on recently rather than me have to dig around in my files to find them. So it kind of spoon feeds you your own content, which is quite good. There's also interactive whiteboards where you can scribble and draw on things which are really useful as well. I can also, as I say, show the conversation panel and, you know, reply to your messages, give you thumbs up, likes and things like that. And um, I'll do that just to make sure I know I've replied to them uh, or I can show the participants list and I could mute you. I could mute you off the side if you're making loads of noise or I could even kick you out of the meeting if I needed to. But because you're in the team and you've got the link, you could just join straight back in again. So there is going to be, you know, some kind of new etiquette rules around these online versions of Teams meetings are going to replace WebEx moving forward. Um, but again, I know that Microsoft are going to be introducing a new sort of presenter and delegate mode, which will give you the sort of the powers that we've got in WebEx at the moment as well. So, you know, we will be able to restrict some people doing particular things. OK, um, how does Teams look for those not on Office 365? Just the same, I think, to be honest with you, Joe. Um, I don't know because I've not tried it before I moved across. Um, but I think it just feeds you into a very similar view. You maybe just don't have quite as many options. Um, by all means, set up a test one with a colleague that you know that isn't on it and have a, have a little play and see how it works for them. Um, I don't know. What people do with that don't have Office 365 at the moment is when you send your requests and your meetings and things like that, they'll be asked to log into Microsoft with their email address that you've sent the request to. And that's like their secure login to get into the meetings or access the, the files and things like that from there. OK, so that's that's just today's first kind of introduction to Microsoft Teams. And um, if you've got any questions, shout up now or type them in the box or send me a ping message later. I'm just going to show you where you can find all of this content if you haven't been using some of this already. So if I just jump back onto Teams here and you've got the Office Champions team, OK, you can either go to the general tab here and there's the Microsoft Champions team site. Let me just maximize that as well, expand view. Now within here, if you've not seen this already, uh, the, there's some really useful video links to OneDrive, Teams, PowerPoint, Excel, Outlook and Word. Now these are all Microsoft's official little starter videos. They're really useful for getting to grips with the beginnings of, of some of these applications. Or you can click on the Microsoft Training Center and go to their overview sort of front screen if you want to look at everything. Uh, I've got advertising the other web sessions that are going on, so you could access them from there if you needed to. Again, I'll be adding some more in. Um, 
I put a little YouTube video in there using a new product called Sway. I'll just mute that so I don't hear my own voice. Uh, but this just tells you how to actually use the Champions team and what sort of content you can access. So you can look at all those if you need to. Uh, there's loads of quick guides for you to download and you can you know start putting them up in your departments if you want people to kind of see how the new things are looking but just here are all the videos that i'm recording just like this one so i'm going to pop this video up to go in probably to replace this first team session one to be honest with you because it's got the new new private channels and things like that which which mondays didn't so i'll replace this team's web session. I might just add it as a separate one on top of it uh, as an extra bit of content there so you can review this in your own time. Um, and I'll just show you the, the other place you can get them from as well is in the events tab. Okay, there's also the training videos there which just show up in a slightly bigger, bigger view. Okay, so you can access this content. And you actually, when you actually do load them up, you know, just mute them so I'm not on there, uh, you will get all the transcription that I was talking about across the top. Um, I didn't say dupes there, so you can see it kind of messes it up now and again, but when you listen to the, the, the audio, you'll see it from there as well. Okay, so I'm trying to put as much of this content on for you so you can all access it whenever you need to. Because um, obviously we've got busy, busy day jobs. Uh, you can access this content whenever you want. Again, if you've got the, the apps on your phone, you can access them from your phone and watch them on there if you need to. Okay, so if you've got any questions whatsoever, fire away. Um, if not, Thanks very much for joining. And again, I'll be advertising some more sessions moving forward. And if you've got any suggestions on web sessions that you want us to cover, uh, whether it's on forms or Sway or Stream or anything like that, let me know and I'll uh, I'll put a session together and we can we can get something advertised for everyone. All right. Thanks, everyone.